I started to realize that there's no reason why I can't do what they're doing. I, you know, I'm just as smart. I'm just as whatever. I have the same skills. Like, why are they successful and I'm not? And what is the reason? I'm like, well, the reason must be me. It's something internal that's making me stop myself from going there. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, I'm super excited to bring you this guest. We've recently been connected over the last few days, and just the conversations that we've had up to this point have really been, it's really been fantastic the beliefs that we have and the things and the missions that we're trying to accomplish with the work that we're doing and putting out into the world, they totally align uh, as far as mindset, beliefs, uh, self-improvement. All of the things that you hear me talk about here on the Rich Mind Podcast is exactly what this guest is going to bring and we're going to discuss those things today. So today I have with us Linda Grizzly. Linda is from Cary, Illinois, which is, we were just talking about, just a little bit of a suburb, or actually it's a little bit further out of a suburb of Chicago, so up there towards the Chicago, Illinois area. She is the creator of MindsetAndMoney.com, where she helps women elevate their relationships with money, understand their money scripts, stories, and personality. She helps them build financial confidence and break through mental barriers. She helps them begin their journey to financial independence, freedom, and success. She's a money mindset coach and a mentor. She's super passionate about helping women live the life they want, make informed choices about money, build confidence, and achieve their goals. And that just all resonates with exactly what I'm trying to do here on the Rich Mind Podcast, which once again is why I'm so excited to bring Linda here on the show. So without further ado, Linda, welcome. I, I'm so excited that you're joining us here today. Thanks, Randy. I'm really glad to be here. I've enjoyed our conversation, getting to know each other over the past couple of days, and I think it's uh, we really have the same the same mission in mind, right? Yes. Yeah. It really is a mission for me. Yeah. So I know that um, you mentioned that I specifically work with women, but you know, my men have my money mindsets too. So I always want to throw that out there. If there's any men listening, you can definitely um, do some self improvement work on your money mindset. Everyone has um, their own money mindset. They're all unique to us as individuals. They're created by um, just our our life, our upbringing, our parents, our grandparents, our friends, our family, our coaches, our teachers, everybody that's come into our lives that gives us an impression of ourself and of what money is to them and what money should be to us. So there's always work that we can do, no matter how much we've already worked on, there's always improvement to be made. Always, always improvement to be made. Absolutely. So take a few minutes and I kind of gave the high level bullet point list of everything a bit about you. So take a few minutes and, and kind of go into your story. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I mentioned you're up there towards the Chicago land area, uh, but kind of where you're from, what you've kind of worked on in your own mindset and how you've come to be who you are today. Sure. So I actually grew up in Colorado um, and I lived in a, you know, a, I'd say a lower class, a lower middle class household, right? So um, my parents didn't talk about money at all. Money just wasn't a topic. And maybe they talked about it themselves, but I don't even think that they talked about it between themselves, honestly. Um, it was just like living paycheck to paycheck. And if we had money, it was it was used. And if we didn't, then we were, you know, trying to save money where we could. But I really didn't have a concept of what that all meant. Um, when I was a teenager, though, um, or even a, a young preteen, my parents gave me the opportunity to do jobs around the house. So I would work for jobs and I would make my own money so that I would have my spending money. And that really helped me in the sense that I, I got the the idea of what it meant to, to, to work hard and work for money. And so that was a great lesson. But one of the things that that taught me also is that the harder I work, the more money I make, right? So I had like growing up this mindset that I have to work really hard to make a lot of money or make any money. I should say not a lot of money, but just any money. So that perpetuated with me into my adult life. And there were times when I was working like a regular job, a side job, and then like doing something else on the side. And this is before side gigs were even a, a really a thing, right? But I had all these things I was doing and I was just working so hard. And you know... I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm a smart person. I've got 
capabilities, um, good skills, but I just never felt like the effort that I was putting in was like paying, paying back off. Right. Um, so there was that like scarcity mindset, like I'm not ever going to have enough, um, or ever have en enough to live the lifestyle even that I'm trying to live. And, um, I eventually married and I married into money. Um, so my husband's family was pretty well off. And so I kind of got away from that a little bit. I was able to stay home with my children while they were, while they were in school and things like that. And, and that kind of went away. But when I, when I got divorced, um, I ended up back in the same spot. I was working super hard. I was at a job that I actually loved the job, but I had people that were not making my job easy. Um, some people that were like, you know, trying to pick sides and separate me from people, some bullying going on there. And so at that point in time, I decided to take a leap of faith and, and quit my job and go back to school, um, because I wasn't making enough money to just take care of myself and my kids. I was going backwards and I was in a job that like, I got a pit in my stomach every day when I went to work and I knew that I needed to do something drastic. So I quit my job and I went back to school. I spent retirement money on going back to school. I don't recommend that. So anybody that's listening, don't think that that's a good idea. Um, there's better ways to do it. But I didn't know at the time. I just knew that I needed to make a drastic change. And so I set off from that point on. It, I was in like a, a, a personal growth journey um, for years, right? So it's been 10 years since that personal growth journey at that point started now. And over that time, I actually rewrote my own money script without even knowing what that was. Um, so after going to school, I became, I, my new career, I became a financial planner. So I'm, I'm, you know, I have experience in that now. But what I've realized is that in working with financial planning clients, that they have their own internal mindsets that keep them from doing things or making decisions based on what their stories were. And that's how I came to to start the mindset and money business, because there are people out there who don't want to work with a financial planner, um, but, but, or maybe don't even have enough assets to work with a financial planner. Cause some people, some planners have a minimum asset, but the idea that I can help people just with the mindset to get them in a better place is huge to me because I did it myself without even knowing what I was doing. And now I'm helping and I'm, I'm helping other women to do the same thing that I did. The difference is, is that I have a program and I, it's backed by assessments, psychological assessments that were created by psychologists of over 40 years worth of research. So um, there's like a program and a plan and there's psychological backing to it. It's not just you like muddling through and figuring it out. So my hope is that, you know, all the mistakes that I made and the things that I went through, hoping that I can help other women get to that point faster than it took me. So you made the point, and I've heard this many times in my life. I think a lot of uh, some of the friends, family even, of my own still to this day, as far as the whole idea of working hard is the only way to get ahead, to get more financial abundance, have a better life. Can you go into that a little bit deeper as far as like how did you break free from that thought? I think that is a limiting belief. I think that is something that we are taught, at least I was taught, I'll just put my name in that category. I was taught that if I worked hard and I just kept grinding and going and going and doing and doing more and more and more, eventually I would reach this pinnacle of this unknown place of this, of this happiness and joy of, of a great life, which I quickly realized based on my own experience and then watching my father go through the same experience and my mother too, for that matter, that wasn't exactly true. Can you, can you go into that a little bit more? Yeah. So uh, if you think about it is it is a limiting belief and a lot of the money mindsets that we have are limiting beliefs it's just that limiting beliefs can go over a wide range of things so um having a money mindset is a type of limiting belief um and the idea is is that when you have something that you're telling yourself whether you realize it or not it almost it it almost makes it come true so for instance like when you say i'm i'm terrible with money you know, I've, I've had I have clients that come to me and say, I'm terrible with money. And what does that mean? Why are you saying you're terrible with money? Well, you know, I've bounced checks and I've, I've made late payments or I did this or I did that. And I would ask them, you know, why, why did you do that? Well, at the time I was going through this, I'm like, okay, well, so you're not bad with money. You just had a really bad circumstance and maybe didn't deal with that circumstance as best as you could. Or maybe you did it the best you could with the knowledge that you had, but that doesn't mean that you're bad with money. 
So changing that, reframing that belief to uh, not that you're terrible with money, but that you can be better with money if you just have the knowledge and skills to get you there. And if you understand that you are and you recognize that you, you need to make improvement, then, then you can change that belief. But there's, there's a lot of steps that actually go into like changing a limiting belief. And usually I say like, you know, the first thing you have to do is when you say something is ask yourself if it's true. And then if, if you can figure out like the source of that belief, like where did it come from? Why do you think that? That also helps because a, a lot of people want to understand like the whole process. Like, why is it there? Why am I saying that? And then just say like, I don't believe this anymore. Like that is not true anymore. It might've been true before. It might not have been true before, but from this point on, that is not my, that is not my story. And then start imagining yourself being free from that and replacing it. Like I said, instead of I'm terrible with money, no, I'm good with money. I just need to get the right tools in place. And then start finding the evidence that 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 new belief is true and start seeing the changes. And I think that, you know, it, the, the big thing is, is that whatever you focus on is what is going to come for you, right? So if you're focusing on the fact that you're bad with money or you're focusing on that, then that's going to come true for you. But if you're focusing on, I need to get better and I need to do some internal work and I need to figure out why this is happening then and, and reframe that belief, then that's how you get, that's how you get over it. I mean, tell me what you, what you've experienced, Randy, in overcoming limiting beliefs a little bit there that might be relatable. Yeah. So one thing I talk about on the podcast a lot is that how it's an awareness and it's getting control of the trigger. I call them triggers. Like I'll get triggered with a thought or a, even a, an emotion uh, from somebody or some something. And I used to let those triggers literally control. I mean, it would, it would happen. It would take over my mind and take over my thinking, which then would control my actions, which then obviously would re control my, re uh, my results versus I've worked really hard to try to control it or realize, become aware when that trigger takes place. So that way, then I can take different actions. Uh, journaling is a big practice of mine. I like to journal or at least write down when that trigger takes place, get it out of my own head, kind of so I can just kind of see it in my 3D world right in front of my face. And uh, that helps me kind of get a little bit more control of it. Does that sound like something you've ever done for yourself or even help with your clients? Absolutely. Yeah. I recommend um, journaling. I, and actually, I have to confess, I am not a journaler myself. I don't like to write, write, write it down. But I do write down goals. I'll write down the goals. And, but, but then I use my mind to do my journaling. So I make it a point every morning when I wake up, um, I lay in bed and I think about the things that are my goals, that where I want to be. And uh, another thing that I talk about is, is thinking about like that a goal is not necessarily a thing. It's, it can be a feeling or a place, right? So your goal could be like talking about like in planning for retirement or something, your goal in retirement is not to have a number of money. Your goal in retirement is to be able to live comfortably and have a feeling that you're, that you're carefree, right? That your freedom in retirement or freedom from the constraints that might be there, right? So I try to put myself in that place and get my mindset in that place every morning when I wake up and then every morning when I go to bed. And I'd like to get better about doing it something something midday or during the day too. But I always want to reset my mind um, for the day and reset it for the night. You know, your body heals at night. You know, even Western medicine says it, that your body heals at night. Um, so what better place to put yourself in than to put yourself back in that mindset right before you go into that healing phase um, so that you're healing in that sense of of that carefree, that freedom feeling rather than in a feeling of stress. So that's my, my internal journaling that I do. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I do that as well. The mental part, I try to do that definitely before I fall to sleep. When I lay down at night, I do try to have a little bit of a dialogue in my own mind with how I feel, what I, in, what I intend to feel uh, the next day, whether, uh, whether an emotion, whether it's a thing, whether, you know, whatever that is, whatever I'm going through at that moment, I definitely try to do that practice as well. That's for sure. So you had mentioned that you kind of stumbled upon, maybe that might be, might, might not be the right wording, but as far as when you began your journey, you kind of rewrote your own money script. I'm curious, kind of how did you discover that? And, and really, how did you make that really happen for yourself? So I did hire a coach for a brief period of time. 
um, and I went back to school and I did all that stuff. But the main thing that I did was opened my eyes and thought bigger. And I know you have, I mentioned to you when I talked to you the other day that you have that think big book behind you. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's like a sign for me because that is what the, if anybody asks me what advice I could give my younger self, that's it. Think bigger, think bigger, because I just never saw the world beyond, right? So I never saw my own self-worth. Like even, even when I was working those multiple like part-time here and there, it's like I never realized that I was really worth more and that I could just go get a job that um, paid more, right? I always thought like this is, this is the, for my full-time job, this is the amount that I can, that I, that I'm worth. But once I started opening my eyes and seeing what was really out there, and talking to people and having conversations and actually asking about money, right? You know, um, I started to realize that there's no reason why I can't do what they're doing. I, you know, I'm just as smart. I'm just as whatever. I have the same skills. Like, why are they successful and I'm not? And what is the reason? I'm like, well, the reason must be me. It's something internal that's making me stop myself from going there. Um, and so really it was just looking at the bigger picture and understanding the bigger picture and seeing the things that I wasn't seeing before. So did you do anything specifically to try to think bigger? Did you, you know, maybe vision boards or anything like that? I, I've tried those myself and, and to say that I have one right now would be a lie. I don't have one right now. I have tried those kinds of things, but did you do anything specific like that to help you try to get that vision of being bigger? Because a lot of times I feel for myself and I'm speaking for myself. And if you don't agree, please, please let me know. But as far as like when you're brought up to believe and think a certain way, it's really hard to think beyond that, that sphere, I guess, or that bubble that you've really been brought up in. How did you get yourself to, to think bigger when you realized that that was really the, the thing, the missing piece to get you where you wanted to be? I think the the biggest realization that I had was, and I didn't, I didn't do vision boards, so to speak. Um, I'm not saying that they don't work like they're they're definitely whatever speaks to you as a person is your way. Um, but I'm a very I'm a very logical person. So vision boards are a little crafty for me, even though I like to do crafts, but they don't speak to me the same way like logic does. Um, so I just started writing down my my goals. Right. So um, starting writing down what I wanted, what I thought I was worth, you know, what the next job was going to pay me. Um, and what my house was going to look like and what, you know, I had all these different things. And that, those are the things that I was internalizing in the morning and at night and keeping in like, this is how I feel. This is what it looks like. This is how I feel when I'm there. Um, and keeping my mindset on that is what happened. And, you know, I was actually just talking with a client the other day and we were talking about, um, a number. And she said to me, she said, you know, my goal was to make, to, to work from home and to make X amount of money. And she said, and I'm doing it now. And now I don't know what to do next. And I said, it's funny, you should ask that because I found that when I was looking for a job, whenever I had a number, I always got that number. And then I would increase the number and I would get to the next number. Right. And it was like, every time I, I, real, I realized that every time I set a number, I got it. I said, so you just need to think about what your next step is. You got what you wanted, but what does that look like now? What are the things that you can tweak to change that? You know, you're working from home and you're making the money that you wanted, but what now, what do you want? Do you want, do you want more money? How is, and if you do, how is that going to uh, affect you, right? What is that for? What is the purpose of that money? Is it going to allow you to live in a bigger home? Is it going to allow you to live in a different place? Um, you know, you want to move from where, from the location where you are and afford something in, in a place where you would rather live, you know, what does that mean and why, um, know that that money is going to go for good, you know, and, and not just the, the idea of having more money. Um, so in talking over that, I realized that I, every time I set a number, every time I set that goal, I got it. And sometimes I would think like, I would go through an interview process and I wouldn't get the job and I'd be like, oh, but in reality, every time that that happened, something better came along. So just sticking with that, trusting the process and knowing. And the, the, the funny thing about like having a number and um, having that number in your mind. Um, one other thing that I want to say is it also works the opposite way. So I, I started a business um, 
when I was when I was married the first time to my ex husband, and um, he had lost some money in an uh, an investment that he had, right? And so in my mind, I kept thinking like, well, he lost that much, so if I lose that much, it's okay because then we'd be even. And it wasn't like something that I was really saying out loud. I was just kind of thinking it. And in reality, after all was said and done, that's exactly what I lost, like the exact amount. So it's, and I'm like, I was internalizing that. I was thinking that. And I like, why was I focusing on that? I should have been focusing on like, no, that's not even an option. I'm going to make money at this, at this business. And it's going to, you know, it's, I'm going to make this much, not like, oh, it's okay if I lose that much. So, but every time that there's been a number, it has happened. Um, so, and it's just, it's just sticking with it and keeping that belief and feeling it and knowing that it's coming and that there might be obstacles along the way. Nothing is linear, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight, but um, working on it and working on other things at the same time. And I know I'm rambling a little bit, but I want to jump back to where you, you mentioned triggers. Cause I do want to go back to that because that's a super important part of it. Um, we see triggers in money mindset, mostly to do with people who shop and get that endorphin rush when they're, when they're ordering something. So, and I'm not saying that I am not guilty of this cause I am, but you know, you're in a, a, you know, something goes wrong. You have a bad day. You, you pop up Amazon on your phone and you're like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. I want this and that. And like, you know, ordering stuff. Um, and, and that's an easy way to get an endorphin rush. And that's totally like uh, something that you work, that we work on, right? Understanding like how you can overcome that overspending and spending emotionally instead of spending for need. Yeah. The triggers has been, when I discovered my triggers, that was a huge awakening for me. Meaning that was a huge moment for me to uh, really start, once again, take control. I was completely out of control during, during certain triggers. Uh, going down negative rabbit trails that I was way out of control in my own mind that once I discovered that that was huge that was huge for me so yeah I would imagine it would be for others as well so a question I have then you you've mentioned several times about goals and achieving goals and it sounds like you're very good at achieving achieving goals and then also helping others achieve goals as well there are so many I've I've been a studier of goals and you know others teaching goals and that type of thing do you have a specific process or a specific way that you go about helping people with goals? Or is it more, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I would like for you just to just describe, you know, how do you go about setting goals for yourself? And then how do you go about helping others set goals uh, for themselves as well, as far as trying to achieve more money, more abundance in their life? Yeah. So it's, when you're talking about mindset goals, it's a little different than talking about like numbers or business goals. So they're not smart goals in the sense that they have all those specifics to them, um, but they they do have to be achievable. They have to be reasonable and achievable, and they have to be the point where you can actually believe it. So if you're setting a number and that there's really no way that internally you believe that number, it's not going to work for you. So start with a lower number and work your way up to that higher number, right? Um, so... It, it it varies from person to person. So there's not like a specific process, but it's definitely about finding something that gives you a feeling that you want to have. Because I, I truly believe that goals are feelings based. It's you want something, but there's a reason that you want it. So what is that reason? What are you going to do when you hit that goal? What's that going to mean? What good what goodness is that going to bring to your world? whether it be you personally or the people that you love or even helping the community, you know, if you want to make a million dollars, fantastic. How are you going to help people with that? How are, what are you, what are you going to, what causes do you believe in? Things like that. Um, and understanding like the power of positivity towards those goals and the feeling that you're going to have when you get there. So it's a little different than your traditional goal setting, but, um, and it, and it has to do a lot with the person too. So how some people can believe bigger right away and just go like, yes, I get this. Like, let's just set the sights really high and let's figure out how to, how to do that. And other people are like smaller steps, baby steps. And so there's a lower, a lower number, a lower thing. And like I said, sometimes it's not a number. It might be just like the house I want to live in or the place that I want to live. And, you know, I want to move to such and such. And just putting yourself, okay, I live there. 
what is my what in my mind what does my home look like and and just that and there there might not even be a number attached to that of how do you get that to happen but then we do work on like what you know what are some steps you can take to get there and i'm a firm believer on when you have a goal take take one tiny step every single day towards that goal no matter what it is whether it's one phone call one email one something research anything so that you're always moving forward you always have that momentum going momentum is so much it's so important it's hard to describe but once you start to see it in your own life it can quickly start stacking i call it stacking right you're stacking wins stacking momentum stacking all that good stuff right that keeps you going keeps you confident Keep you stepping into who you're meant to be, what it is you truly want. Yeah, talk about momentum a little bit and how you've seen that even with your own clients and how important that is in terms of achieving whatever it is they're going for, whatever goal it is that they really want. Yeah, I think sometimes the limiting beliefs can can overcome the idea of it. So, you know, they might have the idea that they want whatever this is, but they haven't done anything to move toward it because they don't believe that it can actually happen for them, you know. I'll never be a millionaire or I'll never have my own home or I'll never like whatever that belief is, right? They're setting themselves away from it. So in reframing it and saying, I'm someday I'm going to have my own home. Someday I'm going to be a millionaire, whatever it happens to be, right? Then just moving towards that and thinking positively about all the good things that are going to come from it. And then taking, like I said, action, take action, like don't just sit there and daydream. If you're daydreaming about something, take action. And again, I'm going back. So I'm kind of saying the same thing. They take the small steps every single day. You're doing something to get you there. What's one thing I can do that will put me one step, even if it's a baby step, further towards that goal? Agreed. How hard is it? And um, you're going to have to reflect maybe a little bit with the clients that you work with or even yourself to answer the question, what is it that you really want? Do you have or do you see where your clients or even yourself, when you when you get proposed that question of what is it that you truly want and allowing yourself to actually have that thought and come up with an answer? Do you see difficulty within folks? I do. That's why I'm asking. I, I have a problem answering that question sometimes it because it's that limiting belief, that limiting thoughts. Just curious on if you see that a lot with the, the people that you work with. Absolutely. Um, it's sometimes people are like, I don't know what I want. I don't know. I just know that I'm not, I'm not in a good place where I am right now. Um, or I'm, I just feel like I need to do, make some change. So we do, we do work on uncovering what that is. Right. So, um, one person I was talking to was talking about, um, you know, her and her husband didn't talk about planning for the future at all. Like they, I would, don't you talk about what you want to do in retirement or what you're going to do in the future? No, we just live day to day. I don't have any idea what my future looks like. So that was, you know, that was a, a conversation that I had to say, okay, well, what, what do you think it looks like? What do you want it to look like? You know, uh, two separate questions. What do you think it looks like if you just keep doing what you're doing and what do you really want it to look like? And I think this is part of the think bigger, right? This is part of you know, where you're just doing your thing and you're not thinking bigger. You're not looking at like what's going to happen later. You're just living day to day. Um, so uncovering that idea is a big step in getting the the momentum, momentum to move forward because you can't move forward if you're not ever thinking about it. Do you think permission has anything to do with it? Do you think people a lot of times are waiting on someone to give them permission to step into whatever it is, this big dream, this big vision that they might have? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, and sometimes the permission might even be from themselves. They need to give themselves permission. Um, but they also might need to figure out like why they need permission and who they need that permission from. Um, because it might be that they feel like somebody that they know wouldn't approve if they did something differently. So somebody else's limiting belief might be holding them in a space without them even realizing it. Do you have any, any types of ideas as far as maybe even we talk about stories, right? We all have our own stories, our own internal dialogue, things we've been fed. Do you have any examples of, of people that have worked through some of their stories that it's helped them? Um, bridge the gap, right? From where this limiting belief 
person is and to obviously becoming and, and deciding to take more, even if it's baby steps, right? Taking some more action, setting some goals and achieving a little bit more. Can you talk about the stories and how those stories are really impacting how we live our life every day? Yeah. Uh, I have a, I have a client who's just about 30 and she is thinking about going back to school. She's got a great full-time job now. But her parents really want her just to stay in school, stay where she's at, like you or not stay in school, stay, stay working where she's at. Um, you know, she already went to college once and took a long time and never finished. But so her parents are like, you have a good job. Just stay where you are. Just, you know, stay with the status quo and, and you know, just keep going with what you're doing. Because to them, and I'm I'm speaking for them, even though I don't know them, but to them, she's safe. She's safe where she is and they want to protect her and keep her from in a safe space. But she's like, this is not where I want to be. I want to go somewhere. I want to do more. I want to get, I want to go bigger. I want to someday own my own business. You know, I want to do this. I want to do that. And she's, you know, but she's worried about what her parents are going to think. And I, you know, I have to talk to her and, and help her realize that you are an adult. You're almost 30 years old and you get to decide what your future is, um, you know, and yes, you're in a great place, but let's make sure that when you start taking your steps towards your future, that you're still remaining in a safe place as you do that. Just because you want to start your own business someday doesn't mean you're going to quit your job and start your own business. Now we're going to figure out the steps to get you there so that you are in a safe place the whole time. So their parents don't have to worry about you. And the funny thing is, is I, after I had this conversation, she said, you know, my dad started a business once and he lost all of our money and we had to file bankruptcy. And I said, exactly. This is why. And so I was like, so do you see now how your parents own money story is being projected onto you? And that is not your money story. Your money story is going to be different and we're going to work through it and you're going to get the tools that you need to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. And she was like, oh, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> she was like, I get it now. And it all made sense. But it's funny because she never even told me that story until after she told me, worked through all this stuff. And then she's like, oh, yeah, by the way, this, this is what happened. And I'm like, well, exactly. That's why they're feeding you that. That's why they want you safe. That's why they're saying they don't want you to do that because they're afraid that that's going to happen to you. But we're going to make sure that it doesn't. We're going to figure out how to make that happen. So hopefully she's been able to move through that. And it sounds like she has. Was she able to become aware and then she, obviously push she, through that? Yeah, she's aware and we're working on it and she's taking steps now to set herself up so that she's getting all the things in place um, to set things up so that she can start working towards that, taking those steps every single day, something toward that goal. And it might take five years, it might take 10 years, it might take two years, but she knows that she's working towards it and that there's momentum and that there's steps being taken to get her there in a safe place at the same time. <laughs> in a safe place. That's always a good thing, right? That's fantastic. So you've mentioned a few times how you help and coach women uh, to go through these, uh, this mindset journey, right? From beginning to, I mean, we can, we all have our own. So to kind of put it in a box and say that, you know, you show up with this kind of mindset and then you're transformed into this isn't probably accurate. I mean, you kind of go through the process of discovering who they are can you go into a little bit more detail about your coaching program, uh, who it's for, kind of what you're there to help people do as far as uh, achieving the, the goals and the dreams that they're looking for? Sure. The first thing I want to say is that it is, it is right now for women only, but it's the age is really any age. So when someone realizes that they need to make a change to their money mindset, a change financially, and that's, that's who my clients are, right? They're people who are like, I need to do something to make a change in order for my life to, to go the way that I want it to. Right. And it's, it's, I don't do, um, coaching, like, uh, financial coaching in the sense that I don't, I don't do budgeting. I don't talk to them anything about their specific finances. Um, I am a financial planner, so I have a separate business for doing financial planning, but in the money, the mindset and money cohort, it's all about your mindset. It's all about the things that, that, that cause you to do the, what you're doing. And it's about learning about your beliefs about money, your beliefs about yourself. Um, we do talk about investments, like investment strategy beliefs and things like that, but not actual investment strategies. So it's a little bit different in that sense. 
it's a it's online virtual course. It's live, so it's not like it's just recorded. It's live and it's a group experience so that you can go through your transformational journey with other people like you and understand that you're not alone and that everybody has all this stuff going on in their heads. And it's eight weeks long. Um, and we do the assessments that were that were built by the psychologists um, and some journaling and stuff, homework. And then we meet once a week and talk it through and go through the things that that can help us get to that to that other level of mindset so that we can move forward and think bigger and do bigger and better things. I love that. Think bigger. Like you keep, you keep saying that, which is such a huge piece. You mentioned about the book I have in the background. If you're watching this on video, that was obviously a big part of my life. And so every time you mention that it just brings a smile to my face about thinking bigger. That's been a, a big uh, challenge, even for myself is to allow myself, give myself the permission through working through my own money mindsets to keep thinking bigger and become bigger, which is uh, super important. And I'm not saying it's easy because it's not, but having somebody by your side to help you guide you through the process is super, super powerful. And I wouldn't, uh, I agree wholeheartedly to find a coach, to find a mentor, to help you through that process is definitely something that can help somebody bridge that gap a lot quicker than doing, trying to do it on their own. So I want to just kind of turn over the, the microphone to you real quick and take Take as long as you need, but think of it like you're talking. I mentioned to you, I've got daughters that are in their twenties, right? Unfortunately, I've fed them a lot of my old past beliefs, my own past negative thinking. So imagine that you're speaking to someone that's discovering and hearing you today going and realizing, okay, you know what? I have these same challenges, these same issues. Can you think through something that you share, just a nugget of wisdom? You've already shared a lot today, which I greatly, greatly appreciate. But can you think of anything else that you would like to share to someone that is really just finally just coming to their own moment of discovery? They're coming, becoming aware that, you know, maybe I do have some issues with my own money mindset and, that, you know, just some, some words of wisdom, some guidance to help them get started. Yeah, Sure. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is that uh, I talked a lot about like numbers and getting to a bigger number, but that's not what the mindset is about necessarily. So it's, it can be just about figuring out how to be happy and carefree and, you know, have financial freedom where you're at. Um, so I wanted to go back and, and, and mention that um, it's not always about getting more money. It can be just figuring out how to maintain the lifestyle that you have and have that freedom to feel comfortable there. Be aware that you have a money mindset. Awareness is the first thing. Um, look at the world around you with bigger eyes. See, you know, see what what different people are doing. Be more mindful of what you're doing, why you're doing it, when you're doing it. And really just, um, you know, looking at the bigger picture and understanding why things are happening to you or to other people. And always have a growth mindset, always be learning, always be, and I know it's hard to tell 20 something year olds, you know, to always be learning, always be, always be doing that. But the other thing is, is don't, don't just listen to things that other people tell you, um, even your own parents, <laughs> you know, listen, but listen with a, with a learning lens and understand how that fits for you. And how that fits for other people and, you know, um, just putting all those pieces together can be tough. You do research, work with a coach, realize when you have, um, when you have a, a, a blockage and, you know, read books, whatever you need to do, journal, do a vision board, but work through your own internal um, obstacles, you know, your limiting beliefs, whether they be money mindset beliefs or whatever they are. But know that you have the power to change. And honestly, only you have the power to change yourself. Nobody else does. So it really has to come from within. And it can be done. That's the beauty of it. If, and if can, I can be do done. it, I say this all the time. If I can do it, yeah, you can do it. Because, yeah, it, I'm not saying it's easy. It's been some of the hardest work I've ever done in my entire life is my internal dialogue, my own self-beliefs, my own uh, limiting beliefs, my own money mindset. I've worked on a lot of it for myself. And then I've obviously tried to give back to as many people as I possibly can through the podcast and then my family as well. But it's uh, it can be a challenge, but at the same time, it can definitely be rewarding if you put forth the effort. And when you come out the other side, you'll be amazed where you can actually be, which is super cool. 
Absolutely. And taking that first step is sometimes is all pretty much always the hardest, right? Getting that first step in and starting that internal, that internal work, because it can be really difficult to face your own, your own internal challenges. But I think that once you get going, um, you like, I think that you and I, Randy, have both done the same thing. Once we got going, we were like, oh, this is it. Like, we are going to just keep doing this till the end of time, just working on our own internal stuff and just always trying to to work through whatever it is that's that's triggering us or or holding us back, you know, and figuring out what those things are so that we can, you know, do better and and help people, help more people, right? Yeah, that's when it becomes fun. For me, it was you get that momentum. You mentioned momentum earlier in the episode, and that was huge for myself. It's like I I was learning new things that I had never really heard before. They were I would almost consider them basics at this point with what I have learned. But if you hadn't been shown, or if you haven't discovered any of those things that were literally brand new to me. And so I would hear something that I was like, okay, I'll give that a try. Whether it was a thought, whether it was an action, whether it was a, you know, challenging a belief, something like that. And when I did that and got a result, that is when I began to stack these positive momentums to the point where then it was like, wow, then it becomes a game. It becomes fun. It becomes like you're, you're in control. Versus having life just kind of pushing you around everywhere. Uh, yeah, it's it's a completely different way of being, but it's it's so much more fun. At least that's been my experience. And I would assume that's been similar for yourself too. Yes. Yeah, for mine too. I I did a lot of my work through reading books also. Um, a lot of self, I don't want to kind of call the self-help, self-improvement books. Um, but a lot of it came from books. And now I try to read whenever... Whenever I get the opportunity, I'm I'm reading, you know, books on leadership or mindset or self-improvement. And every one I take a little piece from. And sometimes I'll go back and read the same one and get a different piece from it. Um, so if you're a reader, that can help too. And if you're not a reader, because I am not, admittedly, I'm not a great reader and I don't enjoy that process, but I'm a listener. I love, which is why I started the podcast. I I would consider myself a podcast junkie. I would find a podcast, a topic that I wanted to grow in and find whoever was talking about it. And I would go deep with those individuals. So if you're listening to me, hopefully you're finding the value in what I'm trying to share because I'm trying to share the experiences that I've had with with myself and even with my guests. But that's where it different modality, right? That's where information these days is so abundant. You can get, whether it's YouTube or podcast, or you're mentioning books, obviously the, uh, the library was where I actually started my journey, even though, like I said, I self-admit that I wasn't a huge avid reader, but yeah, the information's out there. If you're looking for it, and if you realize and become aware that there's an opportunity to become different, and that's the piece that I think that if people could catch that you need to understand that it's different. It's not going to be what you're normally used to. It's not going to be what you normally hear. But if you can catch it and recognize it, man, your life can be so much different on the other, on the flip side. It's it's so cool. Yeah, definitely. Okay, everybody. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this episode, I knew this was going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Linda and I are, are on a very similar mission. We're trying to give back. We've learned and discovered so many different things as far as trying to overcome our own self-limiting beliefs, our own money mindsets. It's a challenge. I get it. And I think a lot of people would, if they became aware, realize that just by asking, gaining some clarity from a coach, from a mentor can really help them bridge the gap very relatively quickly in a relatively short period of time. It's not necessarily the, the same old script what you've been fed as far as going back to school. She mentioned that a couple of times as far as like she went back to school because she thought that was the right thing to do. I did the exact same thing. I actually enrolled back into school. And when I was there, I was miserable because I didn't like school. And I realized, why am I even here? And I ended up dropping out again. That's a whole nother story. We won't get into that route. But anyways, it's a matter of just becoming aware, surrounding yourself with the right people doing the right things that can help you bridge the gap for where you are now to this dream life in the future. So if folks are out there, Linda right now saying, okay, I've got to figure out how to get Linda on my team. I need to find out more about this coaching program that she has. I need to start working on my own money mindset. Take a couple minutes here. Tell everybody a little bit more where they can find you, the best places. And obviously we'll have everything linked up in the show notes as well, but take a couple minutes and tell everybody where they can find you. 
Yeah. So the best place to start is my website, which is mindsetandmoney.com. And you'll find information there on me, on the cohort. Uh, also, there's a links page that has some freebie offers uh, for people if they want to download some some things to help themselves along the way. Uh, there's also a, um, a quick money mindset quiz that you can take, which is a small sample of the assessments that I use during the cohort. So if you want to see what that looks like. And then they can always just schedule a 30 minute uh, uh, with me if they want to just talk to me more about it and see if they'd be a good fit for the program and um, always just happy to help however I can. That's the best part about it. It becomes fun when you start helping other people achieve and, and realize all these great things. It, it It's really a joy. It's really a journey and it's so much fun, which is exactly why I love doing these interviews uh, with people like you, Linda. So I, I greatly appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. So folks, go out there, have a fantastic day. Look up Linda, go out to mindsetandmoney.com, get on and learn about more about the cohort that she's talking about with her coaching program. Take the money quiz, the mindset money quiz that she talked about. That will also be there at the mindsetandmoney.com. And I will definitely make sure that I have all those links and everything for her, for our social media and that type of thing as well in the show notes as well. So once again, Linda, I just appreciate you taking your time out here to spend some time with us here on the Rich Mind Podcast. Thanks for having me, Randy. Absolutely. So folks, once again, go out there, focus on being great. Start working on your own money mindset. It becomes a fun game that if you can really take control of it, start really figuring out where your beliefs are, where are your self-limiting beliefs, what are your goals? What is it that you're trying to achieve? And you when you allow yourself to think about what is it that you truly want and go down the trail and figuring all that out, getting a coach, getting a mentor is going to be super crucial as we've described here on the episode today. So go out there, have a great day. I look forward to bringing back the next guest with you again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.